So last time I ended with the pretty bold claim that A star mapped to B star using F is a bijection. I'm now going to go over this claim in more detail. So recall that A star is equal to the intersection as n goes from 0 to infinity of all a n, where a n is defined inductively by a0 equals a and a n plus 1 equals g of f of a n. And so this definition right here is what we call an inductive definition. We say what the first element is, and then we define uh, how to get the next element from the one before it. Uh, similarly, b star is equal to the intersection as n equals 0 to infinity of b n. Uh, b 0 is equal to b, and uh, b n plus 1 is equal to f of g of b n. So, the first thing that we're going to see is um, that uh, b star, which once again is equal to the intersection as n equals 0 to infinity of the bn's, contains the intersection as n goes from 0 to infinity of f of a n. And so, why is this? Well, let's look at the picture again. Here's a smaller version I did. Um, and so f of a n is going to be, uh, well, for a 0, it's going to be this smaller circle here. So this is f of a 0. And so we see that uh, that's contained in b 0. And so for each one, for each n, uh, f of a n is contained in b n. And so, in the intersection, we see that this is going to hold as well. And so the next thing that we're going to see is that uh, this intersection contains the intersection as n goes from 0 to infinity of b n plus 1. And so let's look at the picture again. Um, here's our f of a 0. and uh, here is our bn plus 1. So uh, on the picture, it's pretty obvious. Um, and the reason that this holds formally is because of what's going on with the injections. And so the final observation to make here is that this is equal to b star. And why is this? Well, why, why is the intersection of n goes from 0 to infinity of all bn's equal to the same thing as the intersection as n goes from 0 to infinity of bn plus 1. We're basically losing our b0 term in this intersection. And what we're saying is that this b0 term actually doesn't matter. And the reason that it doesn't matter is because all the other uh, terms in, of, of our intersection are contained in it. So we don't really have any anything that the b0 term is going to take out of our intersection. And so we get that b star uh, is, it contains this thing, and it contains this thing, but then it, it, it also contains itself. So um, since this thing is both contained in b star and contains b star, what we end up with is that b star is equal to the intersection as n goes from 0 to infinity of f of a n. And so now we're almost there, because we already have that f is an injection. And so what we really need is that um, it's a bijection, or that it's onto, that it covers all of b. Um, and to get that, we need that uh, b star is equal to f of a star. And so to get that from this equality here, all we really want to do is move this intersection to the inside of the brackets. Um, and so now I'm going to show that 
um, if if we have an injection F, then a Y, then um, then then we can do that. Then um, this intersection is equal to this thing here, which is a function applied to an intersection. And the way to show that these two sets are equal is to show that if y is in the intersection of uh, the first, basically the first one. If y is in the first one, then that is equivalent to y being in the second one. And so to prove an equivalence, what we have to do is we have to show that it works both ways. We have to show that if this is true, then this is true. And then we have to show that if this is true, then this is true. So we'll start with the first direction. So um, if y is in the intersection of uh, all the f of ans, that means that for all n, y is in f of a n. Because if there was one f of a n where it wasn't there, then it would not appear in the intersection. So because of that, we get that there is a unique x in a such that f of x is equal to y. And we have that there's a unique x because uh, f is an injection. So it's important to realize that this proof only works for injections. And x is in the intersection of all the a n's. And so finally, this is going to give us that y is in f of the intersection of all ans. And this is because we take the x, um, and that's going to be in the intersection of all ans. And so then when we apply f to the intersection of all ans, we're going to have a y in there. And so now, let's look at the other direction. So, um, starting in the other direction, we have that there exists a unique x um, such that for all n, x is in a n and f of x is equal to y. So um, there's exactly one x once again because we're talking about an injection. And uh, for every n, uh, x is going to be in a n because if it wasn't, it wouldn't appear in the intersection once again. And uh, f of x is equal to y. That's just because of the, the y that we're talking about and how it's defined. And so this is going to imply that um, for all n, y is an element of f of a n. And so if y is in each f of a n, then once again, we get the desired result that x is in the intersection of all f of a n.